Crashing a fully loaded pickup truck in anything other than a cyber truck could ruin your whole day. Let's watch how it unfolds. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. <laughs> Quick thanks to newest Twitter subscribers, Crunch to Grace Hopper and Nicholas Lee. Uh, Crunch is a cool guy. He comments on a lot of videos, and I'm quite certain that I actually met him last year at uh, TeslaCon in, in Texas. So that was cool. Thank you for your enduring support. It's how I'm able to do these videos. You can see all the ways to support me. If you want to, it'd be great. You don't have to. You're here. That's good enough. So what do we got? <laughs> what do we have? We got a mess. Did you know... <laughs> that I've got ad blocker enabled. Good, good, I should, because... Are electric trucks too heavy to crash test? Oh my. Well, no, and if they are, get better equipment. Don't know what to tell you. Really, these big heavy trucks should be crash tested in the first place, and I hope that's something that we'll see in the future, but there isn't a big call to do it, so this whole article is terrible. It's terrible. And yeah, the Hummer is a bulky boy. That's not the point. You just saw that crash we showed at the top. It's bad. Let's look at it again. These guys are explaining how they managed to load up enough weight and still get it up to speed. And oh my goodness, that goes right through the passenger compartment. That's terrifying. That's not good at all. So they uh, need to <laughs> figure something out. So I went ahead and did the math for you, so you wouldn't have to. Uh, interestingly, this article by SAE uh, goes into what the stainless steel is likely to be and how it works and how it's actually the real deal. The ultra hard, the cold rolling it, makes it harder, not stronger, just harder. It just changes how ductile it is. It cannot make it more, cannot impart more uh, tensile strength than it actually has. But by cold rolling it, you can uh, increase, uh, decrease the amount of give it has before it snaps. It's fine. This article is actually quite complimentary to it. Some are not. We'll get to those too. So have you seen these crashes before? Look at this poor thing. This truck <sighs> hit the guardrail and his boat came right through him. That's not good. That's, that's really bad. What are these truck beds made out of? So look at these great pictures here. This guy had a load shift on him. Now you can see the steel, not very thick. How thick is it? We'll get to that in a minute. And this could be aluminum. I'm not sure which truck this is, but regardless of whether they go with steel or aluminum, they gauge it appropriately to give you about the same strength, hopefully. But you can see the bed of this truck when the load shifted, uh, load shifted in bed, new aluminum body on the F-150 is a great idea, lol. Yeah, it shredded it. That's one thing if you're just kind of hauling around town, but when it's safety critical, you got this metal here, is that going to be enough? Trying to decide between aluminum or steel truck bed, here's everything you need to know. Basically what you need to know is they're comparable. The aluminum is lighter and a little bit more expensive, but it gives you the same strength because they rate it to about the same strength. You're gonna have a little bit less maintenance with the aluminum than the steel, because when it scratches, it's not going to rust in the same way that aluminum corrodes. Aluminum just pits a little bit, but you don't lose the structural integrity entirely. Aluminum does develop a coating that kind of protects itself, except in the harshest of conditions. But the thing about a truck bed is it's designed to hold the weight in one direction down. A little bit on the sides, but mostly just keep it from going too far down. You know, gravity. So what is the thickness? What is the gauge of steel on a truck? Well, I looked and I found all kinds of answers ranging from 16 to 20 gauge. But you've knocked on a truck bed before, surely. We all have, haven't we? I hope we have. So uh, what I did is I looked up uh, what 18 gauge is, and there's a whole chart, this whole sheet metal chart here. So 16 to 18, we're talking 1.2 to 1.5 millimeters. So for perspective, the thickness of a penny, or of a dime, here's a dime, 
That's how thick it is. That's about the th about the thickness of. Or actually, I think this is 1.35. <laughs> Let me double check. Yeah, 1.35. Move it over here. So we'll come back to that in a second. This is 1.35. Maybe I'll zoom in. Who knows? Conversely, the thickness of a Cybertruck is three millimeters, which is this thick. And I don't know how well you can see it. If I move too close, it will lose focus. But it is, you know, more than twice as thick, a little over twice as thick, 1.2 versus uh, three millimeter. And incidentally, this sample, this is actually stainless steel. It's quite heavy. This is a gift I got from uh, participating as a speaker at the California Takeover. This is courtesy of uh, Magnets USA, lifelong gifts, magnetsusa.com, uh, cyber opener, yourbottleopener.com. Pretty cool. It's Elon time. Doesn't feel like Elon time, uh, unless it's two weeks. So these are cool. Not a sponsor, but they gave me one. So I thought uh, it's perfect. This is this is three millimeters thick. This is stainless steel. This is what the truck is going to be made out of. And even though this is your point of failure, <laughs> it's very strong, but very heavy. So now let's again talk about the Cybertruck bed. If the bed, the bed of a truck is almost decorative. It's almost a basket placed on top of a frame where this is structural. This is designed to hold on to everything. It holds on to the rear uh, underbody. It holds on to the battery. It holds on to the cab. It holds on. So what would you rather have between you and your cargo in the event of, uh, of the unthinkable? This or this I mean, we know the answer, and this is secured. If they make a commercial showing, oh, if they make a commercial showing a crash testing where the load in a, a Ram, a Silverado, an F-150, smashes through the cabin where the load in a Cybertruck doesn't, it's going to be a very interesting commercial. They don't have to make a commercial. They can just put it out on YouTube and we'll run it for free. Fine. So what is the strength difference? Um, I, I did a lot of math. Thickness of a dime. There it is. 1.355 millime millimeters. And we said the thickness of the steel is going to be somewhere between 16 and 18 gauge. So at most 1.5, a little thicker than a dime, but it could be as low as 20 gauge, less than a millimeter. Go out and measure your own truck. Grab the calipers. I don't know, man. I don't know what to tell you. So it's going to be quite different. So uh, what did we say here? Yeah, there's the thickness. And uh, this is a great article. Stamping simulation, sheet metal engineering on demand. This article is very critical of the design of it entirely. They don't like it. Um, they, they're saying, well, forming stainless steel is actually not that unusual because the DeLorean did it. But the DeLorean did it with something very thin. If you tried to stamp stainless this hard, it would be very hard on the equipment. Surely they, even they know that. Come on. Uh, there was something valuable. And here you can see where they're talking. They actually show math. They show the hardness levels and where the breakoff points are. And again, you can't increase the tensile strength. You can only... Uh, shift where that line is by rolling it. And yeah, you can form it. Uh, they said, well, exhaust is formed stainless. Yeah, but it's different. And you know that. You know better. So yeah, in conclusion, uh, the, it greatly increases um, the strength, but it also greatly increases the weight. Hopefully that trade-off works. So the math we discussed, and I did go through all the math, uh, but what it comes up with is Three millimeter stainless is going to get you 600 megapascals uh, of tensile strength, while the 1.2 millimeter medium grade carbon steel is going to be at 180 megapascals, which means we're looking at more than three times the strength. If, 18, if an 1800 pound load would go through the bed of your truck and into your cabin, it would have to be 6,000 pounds to make the same failure in a Cybertruck. It's literally three times stronger. It is 
not coming through. If it's coming through, it would have gone through a tank. Because this is kind of a tank, and I'm increasingly concerned that it's going to weigh as much as a tank, uh, because that is a very real consideration. What did I miss? What did I misunderstand? Leave it in the comments. Surely someone out there knows more about cold rolled steel, about tensile strength, who can find better uh, examples of crashes and whatnot that uh, might concern us, might inform us, might uh, share with us some things we didn't know. Uh, subscribe, like, do the usual, you know what you gotta do. And for everybody else, stay tuned, stay juicy, and I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots on the next one.